Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and hello everyone. In this video we will be creating the famous matrix rain animation effect purely in vanilla JavaScript. And why am I even creating this video? There are tons of videos explaining how to do that. Well, as you can see, these videos simply create the matrix rain, perfect, but without attempting to animate any word in the middle of it. And when I was working on my personal page, link is in the comment, but be aware, it's very incomplete at the moment. Anyway, I wanted to have this matrix rain animation intro with my nickname in the middle, and I couldn't just simply find a video explaining how to do that on YouTube. Also, ChatGBT didn't give much help as well. It just gave a lot of buggy code. So I had to implement it myself from scratch, and here I am creating the video explaining how to animate your name using the matrix rain animation effect purely in JavaScript. Now, as you can see, this is a prototype of what we are going to write today. And if we update, for example, the word constant, it will be changed in the animation. And a disclaimer to all JavaScript experts out there, be careful, I will be using the imperative style mainly, and I'm going to avoid using any JavaScript syntactical sugar in this video, because there might be people who are not very familiar with JavaScript, but they want to grasp how the animation is implemented. So please don't bully me in the comments below. So tie your seatbelts, cause it's going to be a bumpy quick ride, and let's get started. So let's start with an empty HTML template. First, let's create a canvas with an ID, width and height. Then I would give the canvas some styles. You don't have to do it though, but it is better to give it at least a background style, background color to know the boundaries of the canvas. After that, let's open a script element. Here the logic of the animation will happen, but before I continue writing the code, we need to elaborate how we are going to implement it. First of all, as you know, our canvas is made of pixels, 800 pixels in width and 500 pixels in height. Pixels are just a fancy name for points on our screen, colorable points on our screen. And before we implement the matrix rain effect, we must imagine our canvas as being a table of rows and columns. So each cell of the table will have a size. For example, we can say the cell can be of 20 pixels in height and width. It can be 10 pixels, 30 pixels, we don't care, but we have cells and these cells will have a height and width. Now, to implement the matrix animation, we can put random characters in the table and move them in every frame and that's it. So in summary, we need to create an imaginary table that we can use to logically put characters in the right places on the canvas. And the table will have cells and each cell will have a specific size all the cells will be of the same size. For example, 20 pixels will form one cell and so on. Just like we have in millimeters, centimeters, every 10 millimeters equals to one centimeter, we have every 20 pixels will be equal to one cell. Now back to the coding, let's create a square size constant, which would be the size of the cell. It will be equal to 20. Then let's grab the canvas element, get its context, if you come from a different programming language, you can imagine the context as a brush object. It contains functions which allow us to draw to the canvas. So for instance, let's set the font to monospace and let's set the brush color by editing the fill style property. And finally, let's draw a green rectangle filling the canvas by the fill rect. And if you see green rectangle, then that means everything is working and we can move on to the next step. So saw the column count of the table in a constant. It can be gotten by dividing the total pixels by the cell size. Create an array which reflects the positions of the letter in the table. The array index will be the column of the letter and the value of the array will be the row position. And we have all the variables we need to start creating the rain effect. So create a draw rain function. Since we need a trail effect behind the moving letters, let's edit the brush color to an almost transparent black. Now fill the canvas with the transparent black color, change the color to neon green, and for each position of our array, create a random character and draw it to the canvas. Note that the context methods only accept pixel values, 
So we need to transform our table coordinate system to pixel coordinate system. And it can be easily done with a multiplication. Remember, it is kind of like transforming a centimeter to millimeter. We multiply centimeters with 10. And here it's almost the same. We transform from cells to pixels with multiplication as well. Again, the index of the array is the column and the value will be the row. So after drawing the letter, we move it to the next row by increasing the value by one. If we reach the bottom of the canvas, we reset the row position. But there are two things to keep in mind here. First, we had to multiply in the condition of the if statement because the canvas dot height will return the height of the canvas in pixels, while the letter positions i value is the row of the table. So we need to transform the row into its vertical pixel location. And second, we don't reset the letter position to zero or one. We set it to a negative random number. So it has more of a random rain effect. So if we start in a random negative row, top of the canvas, of course, it will have a bit of a delay before it appears on the screen. And I will be illustrating this in a minute. So let's continue for now. So far, we can call the draw rain function and it will put the letters, render them and increase their position by one. Call it a few times and it will show the trail effect behind the letters. And that's perfect. The function seems working properly. Now we need to animate it. So create an animate function. This would resemble the game loop or animation loop in different frameworks or programming languages. Now call the draw rain function restart the loop to on the next frame by using the request animation frame function. Finally, start the animation loop. Now to demonstrate why we reset the position to a random negative number instead of zero, see what will happen if we put the position to zero. Yes, extremely ugly. So let's just start from a negative random point to make it look like a rain, a real rain. So far, all other videos stop at this specific point, but we are going to go a little bit deeper today. Let's now try to render a word in the middle of the canvas. So create a constant that stores the word you want to animate, another constant for its length, and another constant which stores on which column the word begins. Note that there are three things happening here. First, we get the midpoint of the canvas in pixels. Second, we subtract half the word length also in pixels from the midpoint. This will give us the horizontal starting position of the word in pixels. Finally, we transform the pixel position into a column by dividing it by the cell size or square size in our case. Now define another constant that stores on which column the word ends. Simply just add the starting position and the word length together and this will be the outcome. Again, define another constant which stores on which row the word will be. In our case, I want it to be on the middle of the canvas. So get the midpoint pixel, then transform it into a cell coordinate system again by dividing. Now let's try to draw the text in the draw function to check if the coordinates are okay. And don't forget the context methods require pixels and not rows nor columns. So we must transform the coordinates through the use of multiplication. And apparently the position looks great. So now to animate the letter appearance, create an array which stores which letters are formed and to be rendered. Another variable storing how many letters are formed already. And for each letter in the word, we check if the letter is formed, then we render it. Now we don't see anything. We don't see the word anymore because we haven't formed it yet. So inside the rendering loop of the random letters, create two constants that source the pixel location instead of the row column of the letter. It will make it simpler instead of doing the multiplication every time we want to use the pixel values. Now to form the word, first check if the current random letter position is in the word. So we do that by checking if the I, aka the random letter column, is in between the starting and ending columns of the word position and if the value of the letter position i again aka the row is on the word row position then we give it a 50 percent chance that it will form the character it is on so if it formed it 
then we nullify the random letter position because we will not be rendering the random letters in that column anymore. Then change the filled characters of the font character to true. The index of course is just the column of the random letter subtracted from the first column of the first character position of the word. Finally update the filled variable and we will use the filled variable later to stop the animation. Now if it didn't form the character, we just draw a random letter and continue. And if you want to stop the animation after the word is formed, there should be a slight change. If we reach the bottom of the canvas and we have all the characters of the word fulfilled, then we just nullify the current position and stop the column from rendering. And if the characters are not all formed, then the position of the random letter just starts from the beginning of the canvas. And finally, to stop the column animation, just skip the notified positions in the beginning of the loop. Okay, I made a bug and spent some time debugging it. Instead of drawing the fulfilled characters of the word, I was actually drawing the entire word. So just update line 47 to draw the character that he's formed, solve the issue. Also, I didn't make the character to be rendered on this position, so just update the column of where the character should be rendered. Now it works. The matrix rain animation draws the word we specified in the word constant. And that wraps it for this video. The code can be found on my GitHub. The link is in the description below. If you find this video helpful, amusing, or anything, you already know what to do. Just go play around with the like button. Sorry, I'm in the video. I'm in the code. I'm in the code. Go play around with the code and I'll be seeing you next time. Peace.